please welcome Craig of Flamingham with uh, Enterprise Social Innovation Apache Streams. Thank you. You guys can hear me? I'd like to welcome you to ApacheCon US uh, for this year. It also uh, gives me a lot of pleasure to invite you to my hometown. I work about six blocks from here at Jive Software. So it's kind of wonderful not to have to travel once. So unlike several of the, the talks on this track, which are talking about low-level uh, messaging and how you put a scalable system together, we're going to talk today about a particular data format and how it is becoming more and more popular, and then how the Apache Streams project, which is in the incubator right now, can address putting together a server that focuses on that. So we'll talk a little bit about an activity-oriented view of the world that is kind of evolving and, and has become very popular because of what's going on in the, in the social consumer uh, software world. But it also applies to, to business and enterprise problems as well. We'll talk about the standardized format that is uh, coming from the Activity Streams organization, talk about the Apache Streams uh, project itself a little bit, do a quick uh, quote unquote demo. Demos of middleware are not sexy, sorry. <laughs> We'll at least see the, the basic steps involved in what's going on and then wrap up. So thinking back a couple of decades over how people have learned to interact on the internet, one of the earlier popular ways was blog posts and comments on them. But I had to go to each individual site and, make, and read the, the blogs, make my comments, and I had to go back and see if other people commented on them for me. Or we had huge documents and uh, treatises and things like that. People were measured on the number of words they wrote, but they would be very uh, time-separated sorts of things. That I, I might write a blog post once a week. Activities are kind of in a different world. They tell a story They're, that are much more fine-grained, like Geraldine posted a photo on her blog, or John shared a video with Mark. So they kind of have uh, the idea of this is what just happened as opposed to being an event that happens uh, once a week. And so an activity stream then is a, an ordered list of these things, typically in reverse chronological order is the way that the, most of the world uh, um, presents such things. And we really see this in uh, things like Facebook timeline and pretty much every social website has an activity stream. Many applications are starting to have streams as well. So it's, it's become so popular, but it had different features. The, the format of the data was different on every system, and it made it difficult for us to aggregate those things together. So like, for me, I have a pet peeve of having to go to blog post sites and message forums and have to go back and back and back. I want the information to flow to me. And the, the way that people like me got what we wanted in the past was through email. We used email as an aggregation tool because it could take any format you wanted, intermix it, you could reply to it and do all of those things. But it doesn't work very efficiently at structured information because you have to actually go apply filters to it. But it does serve the aggregation problem. So now I want, I want the activities from all of the things I deal with to be aggregated together, but I also want to be able to integrate and interoperate activities from different systems. So a lot of us here are uh, software developers. So let's take a very uh, selfish example of what I'm talking about. At work, I interact with several systems. We've got a project management environment. We've got issue tracking. We've got Git for uh, source code repository. And we've got uh, our internal uh, communication system. Each of those systems generates activity when I do things, each of, and also when my colleagues do things. I would like to be able to follow all of the uh, activities related to a particular chunk of our, our source code base in any of those systems and filter just the ones that I care about all together. That's the kind of the selfish view I've got. That is difficult to do when the activity stream formats of those different apps are all different. I have to start writing integration software. So the idea of uh, having a standard data format lets us solve what uh, has been known as the friend feed problem. So FriendFeed, before they got acquired by, uh, acquired by Twitter in 2009, one of the features that they offered was inter interoperation between all sorts of different data systems, 59 of them. And they had to do a lot of work to make that possible. What if, instead of having to solve the problem that way, we solved it with a common data format instead? An activity format that is generalized enough to meet all sorts of needs, but is 
uh, capable of being a standard format so that I can write one piece of software that knows how to read it instead. Going beyond the social aspects of this, now I can start thinking of an activity as a semantic model for what's actually happening in my business. So I can describe information like a purchase order or a uh, customer support call that is relevant to actually my business survival, but do it at the fine grain this event just happened sort of level so that if I have needs to respond quickly, I can do that or I can accumulate these and do data mining and analysis and that sort of thing. So the, this concept has started to be adopted by a few uh, enterprise scale uh, applications. And then the standardization effort I'm talking about has actually taken place over the last few years at a, a website called Activity Streams. It was an open project that it was oriented around defining a standard data format that we're going to look at. So like everything in uh, computing, we'd like to give people choices. And so you can serialize either in JSON or XML as an Atom feed or an RSS feed. But the, the emphasis is talking about common object types that make up the pieces of an activity. So here's a very simple example of one that was created by an actor, the person who, typically a person, but it could be an application that is generating the, uh, the event. What they did is they, oops, posted a blog post. The blog post that they posted is the object. And then where they posted it would be the target. So when you put it together, the, the common activity stream format has five different objects that are, these are all optional except for object, but they are commonly used for who did it, what application generated it, what is the object that this activity was actually about, what is the application or service that is providing the activity for us, and then the target is typically a where did it happen. So if I commented on a blog post, the object would be my comment, the target would be the blog post itself. And then there's also extra fields that are just simple strings or dates that can add additional information, like when it was published, and then the verb is the action that actually took place. And then within each of the objects, you have a set of optional fields as well, like uh, the author of this particular object, the details of the content or a summary, depends on what uh, your application wants to do, a display name that you can actually uh, show in a user interface. Most objects to be useful will have a URL that points at the HTML representation of this object somewhere on the web, and an ID, which is a globally unique identifier so that I can refer back to this object later on. So if we go back to our common example, then we can see that the actor has a, a URL pointing at the profi user's profile, has a, a unique identifier that says who he is, a, a profile image so that you can show this in your, um, <clears throat> in your UI. The object that was posted has a URL and an ID. It could have had the content or it could be just pointing back to the content, depends on what your system wants to do with it. And then the target was where the, the post happened. So the standard itself became uh, finalized. The 1.0 standard for this format became finalized, I think it was 2011, right at the end of 2011. There's some ongoing efforts to now uh, do extension standardization efforts around verbs so that you can have a common understanding of what something like create means or delete or an invite. And then also uh, a, a wide variety of object types that have some standard fields that are special to that object type. The goal of this, of course, is to increase the interoperability. There's also discussions around being able to let the sender of an activity target who should receive it, as opposed to letting the, the, work, the system you're sending to do that with, by being able to say to and carbon copy, just like you can in email. And then if, I have, if I've received an activity and I want to do something to it, I can refer to it. I'm, I'm replying to that particular comment or that particular blog post as I go. So these standardization efforts are ongoing. So just a, a, a few of the companies that are using the standard activity streams format as opposed to just general purpose things are everybody uh, from four different Apache projects, uh, including one we're going to hear about later on with Rave. Uh, Atlassian actually has activity stream uh, plugins for both Confluence and Jira so that you can receive in this standard format uh, the events that happen in those two systems. IBM uses it in their connection social product. 
I work for Jive, and so we use this quite a bit. Since I'm more familiar with it, I just want to take a couple seconds to say what we do with it. So Jive is all about uh, letting people create content and collaborate on it, share it, like it, uh, and then listen to the events that happen on that content that uh, I'm interested in. You can optionally sort where the content is in social groups that are relevant to your particular purpose. So we use activity streams to drive our entire mobile or, uh, infrastructure. And it, it is sufficiently rich in its uh, data carrying capacity that I can send an activity stream uh, version of my inbox or a particular stream I'm listening to and produce a, a UI that's faithful to our uh, online product as well. So it's a very capable uh, format to be able to carry information without having to make the mobile client go back to the server for everything that it needs. And then the, the last one is also interesting. The Open Social Foundation has standardized on the activity streams formats in the Open Social APIs. So there is a standard REST and a standard uh, JavaScript API for producing and consuming activities that can be built into widgets that can be installed in uh, lots of different projects, including Jive, including the Rave project that we'll see later. So there's starting to be some adoption of the format that is uh, uh, very useful that solves the friend feed problem because the fundamental structure of the activity stays the same. So turning from the format, let's talk a little bit about the, the software project. Uh, Apache Streams was uh, introduced into the incubator last November. Uh, we've got several of us who have not had as much time as we would like, and so we're always looking for volunteers that are interested in uh, expanding the capabilities of it. But some of the sorts of things that Apache Streams is about is being a centralized, uh, essentially a, an activity stream broker for aggregating from multiple publishers and distributing to multiple subscribers activities in the standard format. So this is going to let me, when we have it uh, finished, do my aggregation world of taking all of the input sources I care about and getting them into one stream and federating those responses. I can do filtering because I can plug in a, a piece of code that says I only care about these kinds of messages or that have these Lucene keywords or something like that. I can query against it because it'll have a persistent database of the messages that have been sent for over the last amount of time, whatever you want to save. I can do data mining and in analytics, how many of these kinds of messages are happening, right, at what rate. That's everything from how many bugs did I record in JIRA to how many commits I made. All of the different categories can be, you can watch the activity streams to do the data mining for that. And the one that came up as I was preparing this talk, I noticed that the Atlassian's uh, data formats are used the XML serialization. So we should look at as adding a feature to Apache Streams to do the JSON to XML or back transliteration. So I can uh, achieve some value out of this. We're not gonna go through the entire architecture. It wouldn't even fit on one slide. But the basic idea is that an activity publisher subscribes and re uh, receives a URL endpoint that they can post to or you can uh, put data across the uh, message bus as well. And then internally, we're, we're building routing capabilities that say who should receive this information. So you can put in filters like, are you allowed to see that particular stream? Or are you allowed to see that particular activity? Ends up splitting things out, storing them in, in activity queues, which are then consumed by a subscriber that does essentially the same process in reverse. I want to register myself. I want to build my own filtering and routing on what I receive from the aggregation service so that I have control over who the senders can have as many streams as I want sending, I can have as many streams as I want subscribed to receive just the kinds of information I want on a particular stream. So as I said, it's not very sexy, and I don't want to tempt the demo gods. So I actually did this this morning, <laughs> and just left my REST client examples up here. So the, the streams, a uh, server has a register endpoint that I send a block of, of code that essentially describes the characteristics of how I want to send the data in. So in my case, I'm going to use HTTP posts. I'm going to say that the source of these things is a particular URL. And if I have authentication characteristics, I can enter those. And then what I get in response to that is a URL that I can post to that will post or publish activities to this particular endpoint on the way in. 
Likewise, there's a similar flow for subscribing. That I, I register as a subscriber. I say, what do I want to get uh, using the internal technologies because we can customize all of this stuff. What filters do I want to apply to which messages I receive? So I can do things like the Lucene keyword matching once we implement the right filters for that. And then how do I want to get it out? So in this case, I'm going to re receive it by polling an HTTP endpoint. I can see us do things like web sockets and uh, message buses and all sorts of stuff in the future because it's a very extensible platform. Again, I receive, oops, I receive back a URL that I can pull to receive uh, messages. When I send one, I'm, I'm, the, I'm now the publisher again. I'm using the URL that we receive back again and sending anything that's in the standard activity streams format. And then I got a confirmation back that I sent it. And then when you receive, uh, we uh, have a lot of to-dos in the code yet, and this is one of them. It's got a standard uh, message return value. This actually got patched yesterday, but I wasn't going to risk downloading a, a new version right before the, the demo. I'll do it afterwards. It now returns you the actual message. But these are the basic mechanics of, of actually using Apache Streams. So we could have implemented this thing using just a simple web app. But one of the goals we have is a high scalability and high uh, customizability. So we're actually using a fair number of Apache projects as the technological foundation. So where the messages go is a, a, an implement, a running implementation of Apache Service Mix, which is an ESB container. It uses Apache MQ for the messaging back and forth across hosts. Uh, Apache Camel provides integration, enterprise integration patterns that you can apply for filtering and sorting and publishing. Internally, it uses CXF for the HTTP traffic. And then you've got the option to, uh, to interoperate with uh, Bipple-oriented business processes, if you want, as well. And then underneath all of that is the Carafe library, which uh, lets us plug OSGI-compatible components in on the fly, if you want to. So you can highly customize what, what we're uh, providing in Apache Streams. So I, as I mentioned, we entered in incubation in November of 2012. There's some experienced Apache folks that have been around a while, plus some additional committers. We're always looking for more. The developer mailing list subscription is there. The, <coughs> excuse me, the, the website is uh, still in the incubator. We'll graduate when we uh, follow all the steps of the Apache process for that. And it's time for questions, if you have any. I'm sorry? Is this similar to syslog ng? Like green screen filters? It's probably similar conceptually, yeah, but it's focused on the activity stream format. Okay, but can you, can you give examples, general examples, like what kind of company would use it or how they would use it? Like, for example, would Twitter use this to send out?
side of the room comments on the blog post in a blog tool, I don't want you know, 25 different activities to go to credit. It's true. Right? That's just too big. Yeah, because all of a sudden, we'll lose, you'll flood your users, they'll lose the, the value of the stream that's going to What you want is you know, 25 people commented on the blog post, and then you can go and pair it with that and get more good information on, on who those users are and what their are. What is that? Are we talking about failure modes? Is that what you're asking? Well, you've got uh, Service Misc is the, the base platform for this, and so it's going to be running all the time. But the particular failure mode of any individual component is part of that component's design. So typically, if a, an authorization component finds that its uh, LDAP database is down, it's going to say, I'm sorry, you can't log in right now. Sort of, but it, the system will still stay running. But it's really up to the individual components to design their own failure modes. So the message bus for the activity queue is, is uh, across multiple machines for the redundancy needs as well. I'm sorry? So I, mean, I think that, you know, Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that what we'd see is that would be maybe not a natively supported, you know, might not have some extension libraries to support that. But what you're going to see is so, so there's a there's a, uh, a service under called GNIP, 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 and they do that. that is so what we would be looking to do is support them, their efforts in terms of having the core infrastructure worked up by the larger group. So you probably find those specific implementations of the Apache Street project, maybe some supporting libraries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this suitable for uh, system activities as opposed to human activities? It definitely can be. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the verbs are extensible. Mm -hmm. and yeah, the verbs are, are totally extensible. The the standardized one is post, but you, uh, what we do is uh, created for creating a document, liked, shared, right. other verbs that are relevant in our business uh, experience. Yeah, yeah. So I restarted a server. It's uh, having failures, that sort of thing. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, I have a question. Uh, how, it, how does it relate to the Storm project or stream processing? Are you familiar with Storm? No, I'm not. Well, uh, I don't. I, 
it's your question, but I mean, uh, to, to me, this is uh, dealing in a different solution space than, than Storm. Storm you know, has a specific emphasis that is separate and aside from, from this. In fact, I desire to all these songs for the human edition of the consumer, which is the consumer of the biggest service of the application. And I keep loving that most of the time. So I'm going to say this, but this is a much bigger thing than the human edition. Okay. Okay. Um, is your intention to just develop the central server for the routing and subtract this? Yeah. So our focus so far has been on the server side as opposed to the client side, but there's no reason that it wouldn't make sense to have client libraries in all the various languages that know how to consume uh, open, or activity streams. That's why we already have it now for JavaScript with the Open Social Foundation. So. <clears throat> For sure. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you'd like to be able to create an, an, uh, an integration hub, yep. if you will, mm -hmm. for these kind of things yeah. so that it's encouraging to look at the work that Alice has done along these lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a standard plugin for either Jira or, um, <coughs> excuse me, Confluence. Take advantage of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all in one place. Yeah. So is there any thing that prevents them using this outside of the functional So this is a more so this particular project is more about the data format of activity stream. So being able to, to understand it, process it, and, and provide an infrastructure for for managing it. So if you want to use that data format for anything else. I would say if you have two apps, you probably don't really need this. You could just use the messaging below it. If you have 20 apps, it starts to become a little more interesting to integrate from different sources. If you have 200 apps or 2,000 apps, it becomes really critical to have an aggregation integration tool. So it's, a, it's about the scale of the number of, of inputs and the number of outputs more than it is how many individual apps it is. The framework will support that. Uh, we haven't built any out-of-the-box modules yet, but certainly you, well, you want permissions at two levels, really. You want authentication. Are you allowed to get into the system at all? But then you, you need uh, security on the individual activities that you can see. And so there, there's a, a filtering mechanism that lets you build plugins into your installation of Apache Streams that customizes that for whatever you need to do that. So let's, let's assume that I've got uh, secure messages. The, let's use the example of I'm doing system monitoring, but I'm not allowed to know about particular servers that are in this confidential share, uh, area. The, the uh, IT staff should be able to see those messages, but I shouldn't. So I can write a filter that says, is Craig allowed to see the message from that particular server as a, as a filter? And that's sort of a domain-specific uh, environment that you, you'd have to build that module and plug it in. 
And then we'll have standardized filters on things like uh, keyword matching in the content or something like that. But uh, you'll have the ability to, to use the standard ones or, or build your own. Yeah, you can do it in the other direction too. I can say I'm part of a social tree. I'm part of a work group. I want to see all the activities from my uh, colleagues, but not all the activities of our sales group because that, that's all sales. That's not important stuff. <laughs> I'm relying on Matt because he was involved in the initial development so, of this. Uh, yeah, we're, we're about ready to get up. We got like two minutes left. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. So, um, uh, the, I, in my mind, right, so, and I think that this is something we haven't really defined yet as a, as a community. I think what we're trying to get is something like you know, a wired test where we can get something like this architecture up and running and then evolve it. But I do think that it's persistence. It's, as an, it, this is like an intermediate store, right? So some sort of per per persistence is critical to this being successful. Right? You don't want, in my mind, none of the, the subscribers should have to persist the data you know, if they don't want to. Right? They should be able to always go back and get, you know, some, for some window of time. How do we manage that window of time? And, and things like that are probably have to be configurable. At the, we have to figure that one out. <laughs> but that's, that's a pretty big problem yeah. to solve. So. OK. I think we have time for one last question, if there is one. If not, I think it's time for lunch. <laughs>